Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School today. And let's begin with prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Jesus' death on the cross. And the Father has given Jesus permission to send us the Holy Spirit. Let's see it in light of the 1888 message. We pray in the Savior's name. Amen. This is lesson number two, the Holy Spirit working behind the scenes. When a theologian writes that the Holy Spirit is elusive and mysterious, it leaves a layman in confusion. The Spirit is anything but a mythic force. The 1888 message clears away the shadowy misunderstanding of the Spirit. Since Christ is our true high priest in the heavenly sanctuary, he is 100% divine and 100% human and he is unable to physically be present everywhere. And so Christ's representative, his equal as God, is what Jesus called another comforter, sent to come alongside everyone. In other words, we may say that the Holy Spirit is the true vicar, a representative of Christ. And since the 1888 message is the clearest gospel revealed as present truth for our time, it is about the cleansing of the sanctuary truth in its post-1844 phase. And so the Holy Spirit works with Christ, revealing the truth of the gospel for our end time. The lesson for Tuesday is entitled, The Holy Spirit and the Sanctuary. It makes the connection with the Spirit's work when the tabernacle was built in the wilderness. But the connection of the Holy Spirit with the sanctuary is more than cold, dry facts. It is heartwarming truth. The focus of the 1888 message associates the work of the Holy Spirit in finishing Jesus' work with the sanctuary. In other words, preparing a people for translation without seeing death at Jesus' second coming. In the past, the investigative judgment, which is a phrase used to describe the sanctuary truth, uh, has, uh, has been used uh, to describe this phase, uh, this last phase of Christ's work. And this investigation has been called the last warning message to the world. Now, in some respects, it has been more terrifying than comforting to conclude that Christ, the Father, and the angels are reviewing the record books of our lives in an effort to find dirty secrets that will keep us out of heaven. The 1888 message brings comfort, teaching us that it is not our job to cleanse our lives of sin. Even in the Old Testament, in the annual Day of Atonement, it was the high priest who made atonement for the people. And so we may rightly conclude then that it is Christ's job to cleanse us from sin. Our job is to let him do it. If you have never connected the work of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, with the idea of the investigative judgment, then this 1888 concept may bring joy to your heart. There are three things that the Spirit does which line up with the pre-Advent judgment truth. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit uh, in John 16, I will send him unto you, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And then Jesus explains what he means in John 16, verses 10 and 11. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. He will give the final gift of repentance. In every human heart, the Holy Spirit has brought a conviction of sin, a sense of right and wrong, and blessed are those who respond to that conviction which the Holy Spirit gives. We would do well to make sure of our present heart attitude toward the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the greater light of intelligence, which now shines unmercifully upon the hidden motives and evil machinations of our ego self, many would be quite uneasy if a thoroughgoing psychoanalyst began working on us, even though 
we have stood in numberless reconsecration services, how would we react to a genuine psychoanalysis by the true Holy Spirit of God, whose great office work is thus distinctly specified by our Savior, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He convicts us of sin so that he may heal us of it. But he also has a second work. He will convict the world of righteousness. And why? He says, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. That means we can see Jesus just as clearly now through the work of the Holy Spirit as the disciples could who saw him face to face among them. If the presence, in the presence of God there is guilt, it is almost impossible to conceal even from yourself. Romans 8 verse 7 says, The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. We have within our minds now this resistance to being in God's presence, and there is a reservoir of sin and sinful inclinations within us that we do not understand. Peter is an example of that. He said that he will follow his Lord to prison and death. And he meant every word of it. But Ellen White says Peter did not know himself because hidden within his heart were elements of evil that circumstances would fan to life. And unless he was made conscious of his danger, these would prove his eternal ruin. The message says there is a remedy for this reservoir of corruption. It is the probing work of the Holy Spirit. His function is, among other things, <coughs> to bring us into circumstances where we will be forced to confront traits that we didn't know that we had, to bring to our conscious level an awareness of sins that are still lurking in our lives. We might call this the investigative judgment. Every time that happens, we are confronted with the decision of the ages, and we have to decide, would I ra rather have Jesus or that sin? And so over and over, the Holy Spirit brings us into circumstances that tend to make us aware. And sometimes we say, I didn't know I had that in me. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. And we need to thank the Holy Spirit for doing this. One of the 1888 messengers, Jones, put it this way at one of the ministerial meetings. Quote, some of the brethren came here free but the Holy Spirit of God brought up something they never saw them in themselves before. And the Holy Spirit went deeper than ever before and revealed things they never saw before. And then instead of thanking the Lord and letting the whole wicked business go, they got discouraged. If the Lord brought up sins to us we never thought of before, that only shows that he is going to the depths and he will reach bottom at last. And when he finds the last thing that is impure, and we say, I would rather have the Lord than that, then the work is complete, and the seal of the living God can be fixed on the character. That's A.T. Jones in the 1893 General Conference Bulletin, pages 404 and 405. Well, Ellen White put it this way, quote, your circumstances have served to bring new defects to your notice, but nothing has been revealed, but that was in you. That's in the Review and Herald, April 6, 1889, entitled, A Lively Hope. We might term this the investigative judgment. Now remember, repentance is not something that we work up ourselves. It is a gift from the Lord. For Acts chapter 531 tells that him hath God exalted with his right hand, referring to Jesus, to be a prince and a savior, and to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's from the Revised English Bible translation. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness, that is, he convicts us of the right thing to do at all times, and we want to accept the gift and receive it. It's not a sad experience. It is intensely joyous for to be heart reconciled to the Lord Jesus 
and the Father is joy unspeakable. Think of Joseph, who was in Egypt. Uh, immediately when he was confronted with evil, he knew what Jesus would do, run. And so you run, not because of self-centered fear, but from a heart appreciation of the price the Son of God paid for your soul. How can you not give him your all forever? Because he gave himself his all for you forever. Then the third work of the Holy Spirit is that he convicts of judgment. Because the prince of this world, which is Satan, is judged. That means Satan is condemned in your life. The Holy Spirit convicts us of judgment. That is that Satan, the prince of this world, is cast out and he is defeated. The Spirit convicts us of triumph over sin. We see his power in our lives. In other words, in plain language, it's impossible for us to backslide unless we do what Stephen said the scribes and the Pharisees did in Acts 7.51. You always resist, he said, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says he will take you by the hand as a father leads a little child. Or maybe the Hebrew means take you in his arms. But he says we squirm away from him. There's no need for backsliding. Stay in Jesus' arms. Stay in the, with the Holy Spirit. And so, today, Jesus will say something to you, that is, through the Holy Spirit. And he will say something and convict you of some duty. Well, you tell your Father, which art in heaven, you tell him a deep thanks for that. And so, wait before him. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the precious work of what we might call the investigative judgment. It's the comforting work of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus has sent him to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.